See, faith cometh by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing the Word of God. Do you believe that today? And there's some things sometimes that you've, you've got to realize we, the church, have gone through a period of time of barrenness. Is that okay? Where the, where the church basically lost the purpose, lost its vision, lost the dream, and we became, if I can say it, a club where people came together, sang some happy songs, got to know one another, listened to a morning mass, I mean message, <laughs> and, 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 you know, and, and sort of went home feeling pretty good. Uh, we've done our duty. But see, God has got a different plan for the church. And, and I've, you know, this morning I'm just so aware and, and I think I've been awakened uh, two weeks ago when I did that political rally and, uh, you know, just listened to people. Then I went to a breakfast uh, the other morning where there was a political speaker speaking and uh, I spoke to him, he asked for questions and my, I put my hand up. I said, where does the church fit in all this? Where do we fit? Are we relevant? And he talked, the, you know, the, the uh, po political talk for about five minutes and then he looked at me and said, Neil, I can't answer you. Because they don't see us as being relevant. They don't, they don't see us. We're, we're, we're just a bunch of religious freaks. Friend, we've got to get rid of that stigma. We've got to get rid of that approach where, where people will come to us because we are carriers of the mantle and the anointing of God. Amen. We've got something that the world can't give. And the world can't take it away. We have the anointing. We have the power. We have the authority. We have the victory. And we have that healing power that can set captives free. And that's the purpose of the church. And so how many people believe that we need to stir ourselves up? We've got to break through. We've got to push through some stuff. And, and the, the church will become relevant. See, I, I believe that unless the Lord build the house, they that build it labor in vain. People stay up late for nothing. And really, for Australia, will not be built on good ideas and political correctness and goodness knows what else. It's going to be built on the Word of God. It's going to be built because God is in control. And, and, and so today, I want to, I want to share uh, my heart with you. And I want to talk about three things we must continually remind ourselves of. Continually remind ourselves of. Number one. I believe we've got to re remind ourselves the, of the purpose for which Jesus Christ came to this planet earth. The Bible says in uh, 1 John 3, 8, it says, For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that He might destroy the works of Satan. Do you believe that today? We've also, number two, we've got to, we've got to understand and remember the purpose for God sending the Holy Spirit to the church. Had a purpose in sending the Holy Spirit. Acts 1.8, it says, You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me. Really, God wants us to be witnesses of His power. Witnessing His power. That when we come across people in the world that say, you know, I've got this or I've got that, we say, I've got the answer. It's not in a pill, but really it is. It's in the gospel. <laughs> But, you know, we can say, I've got, I've got the anointing and I can lay hands on you and, and, and see the people set free from the, from the bondages of the enemy. So we've got to understand. In John 16, verse 13, it says, The Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you into truth. Holy Spirit's here with a purpose. Uh, well, number three, the purpose of the believer or the church. I believe that our purpose is to maintain the kingdom of God on earth till He returns. In Mark uh, chapter 16, uh, verse 15, this is what Jesus said. And He said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe in my name, they will. Everybody say, they will. See, believers, this is God's purpose. This is God's plan for you and me. They will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick 
and they will recover. I believe that Jesus came to take back that which was stolen in the Garden of Eden. He he paid an enormous price. We're talking this morning about the, the precious price, the blood, the cost, how much it cost. When we, were, when we were having communion, the gentleman giving me the communion, he said, it's my shout. <laughs> and I looked and I said, yes. So I said, it's very expensive. You can't buy it. <laughs> it's the most expensive commodity on this planet. And, uh, you know, it's an amazing thing. But Jesus didn't pay. And, and as, we, as we look and as we think and ponder uh, about what Jesus went through, when the sins of, of you and me and the whole world were put upon him. Chastisement of our peace was laid on him. He, he, by his stripes we were healed. That, that whipping pole, the son of God that, that had 12 legions of angels at his beck and call. That, that had the power of God that he could have just lifted his hand and, and every one of them would have been slain, even destroyed. We hear of prophets of old that when people come to get him, he just said, God, send fire and and it it just burnt them up. Jesus had that same power, that same authority. He could have done that, but somehow or other, he went through it for you and me. He paid the price, but he didn't pay the price for you and I just to sit around playing tiddlywinks in church. He didn't pay the price so that we could walk through life with all of our miseries. He, He paid the price to set us free to pay the price for every person in humanity. Came to take back that which was stolen. He did this by giving his life a ransom for man's sin. Thank God today when Jesus died and they put him in the grave, thank God the grave couldn't hold him, amen? Thank God he arose. He arose triumphant or his foes, hallelujah. He arose from the dark domain and he lives forever. After the resurrection, Matthew 28, 18 to uh, to 19, Jesus came and spoke to them saying, said these words, and when Jesus speaks, how many people know that when he speaks, it carries something? He's not just saying words. Sometimes we can can be on this in a conversation, we're just saying words, Just, just speaking. But you see, when Jesus spoke, there was something that, that he carried. Now, and as he spoke, and, and I always remember when, you know, when the devil tempted him in and, and Luke and, and, and he stood there in the synagogue and he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And, and I can almost imagine the, the whiplash and the, and the, and the turmoil that, that, that sent ripples right through uh, the kingdom of, of the enemy. Every demon and everything that where Satan thought that he was going to uh, destroy him and everything like that. But he stood up and he spoke those words and those words carried authority. And those words are still crying out today and they're still speaking today. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because God has anointed me. What an amazing thing. And, and so Jesus now comes to his disciples and he starts to speak to them. And, and, and he starts to talk about the anointing. Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. I I believe today that we've given up and we haven't really discipled people properly. People need to know the call of God. They need to know why they're on this planet. I'm not here just so that I can live a few years on this planet and and do this and do that. I'm here to establish the kingdom of God. I'm here for a season. This is not my home. We are pilgrims passing through. God had a plan that we would live in the Garden of Eden forever, but I don't know, something happened. We realized what happened. Satan came in, man fell. So God had to put necessarily plan B, but God knew from the foundations of the earth that Jesus would have to come. And Jesus paid a price. And so now we've got allocated to us 120 years. Some say three score and 10. I just read some stuff the other day where this woman was still 90 something preaching the gospel, hallelujah. Age has got nothing to do with it. It's just a number. 
But I believe that God wants to raise up people that have got a destiny and a purpose and a plan on this planet that we go out there and become the church and, and, and do what God wants us to do. And it says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Uh, Jesus carried this anointing through all his ministry on earth. He, he worked with that anointing. They, they said, you know, how, you know, this man preaches, speaks as one with authority. He had authority over all these things. Jesus carried this anointing. In Acts 10, 38, the Word of God says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went around doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil. I want you to have a look with me in the book of Mark. We've got a lot of scriptures we're going to be reading this morning. Uh, the book of Mark. Mark chapter 1. And, Je and verse 18, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Holy Son, and, and uh, the Holy Spirit, rather, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always. Uh, Mark chapter 1, uh, verse uh, 21. In, in Luke 10, verse 1, Jesus appointed 70 to heal the sick and say the kingdom of heaven has come near you. Jesus, th these disciples were there and Jesus did something so dynamic with them and he raised them up and he said, okay, now this is what I want you to do. I want you to go out there. I want you to preach the kingdom of heaven. I want you to heal the sick. I I'm going to send you out. The, the disciples came back and they, they said, even the demons are subject to you in our name. And Jesus immediately turned around and said, I saw Satan fall. I saw Satan fall. Marvel not that the demons are subject to you, but marvel that your name is written in the Lamb's book. What an amazing statement. Jesus anointed these guys and they came back with power and authority. They're talking about what Jesus had done. I saw Satan fall from heaven. Behold, I give you authority. Friend, church, God gave us authority. I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. There's people there that suffer with fear. There's people there that suffer with so many things. They're so terrified of this enemy. But God says, I will give you the authority. See, it just didn't say you have authority because there's something there that's out there. It's over here somewhere. So if I get hold of it, I can have it. But Jesus said, I give you the authority. I give every believer the authority. Not something that just a few will collect. But if you realize what God has put on the inside of us, if you realize what you're carrying, that when you speak, you speak with that same authority that Jesus had. All authority has been given unto me in heaven and in earth. Now I give you this authority and I want you to go into the highways and the byways. I want you to lay hands on the sick. I want you to cast out. I want you, if you pick up any deadly thing, it will not hurt you. I want you to know who you are. I want you to carry this anointing. You see, if we're going to be relevant on this planet, we're going to have to start to break some strongholds that have got over our minds and into our thinking that we can't do it. Jesus anointed them. He, he put it over them. And, and it's an amazing thing. And I've, I've been, just been thinking a little bit lately and I had uh, some lunch with uh, dinner the other night with Skip. And I asked him what he thought about this. You know, Jesus, you, it's, an, it's an amazing thing that God anointed us. Why then did he say to us, tarry in Jerusalem until you receive? And what I've found in church many times is that we can come to church or we can get involved with somebody or something. We have an anointing in this place, okay? You can come into this place and, and, and the anointing, I've heard people say, they walk through the door, they sense the presence of God. They're in the middle of worship or praise or whatever it is, you, you just sense something, you know, it's, it's not the same every week, it's different, but you just sense something. So there's an anointing. People, and I've often questioned this, why many times when people come to a healing meeting uh, and they get immediately healed, but then they go out 
and they, and they, they, lo- they lose their healing. Anybody else, right? And so I just started to question. I'm thinking, why does that happen? You see, there's an anointing in a house. There's an anointing in a church. There's an anointing in, in a, in, over a ministry that will get people. But you see, God doesn't want us just to rely on somebody else's faith. He does not, does not want you to rely on, on Benny Hinn's faith. Now, you might go to a Benny Hinn's meeting and get healed. And then I know, please don't misunderstand me here. But many times there they say that, that they go after the people that have been healed and they check them out. And a, and a big percentage of the people lose their healing and go back to where they were. Is that, okay? Is that correct? See, what Jesus wants you to do, He wants you to realize that He wants you to have that personal relationship with Him. He wants to fill you with the power of God that our faith is not in that, but our faith is in Him, amen. Our faith is in what God can do. And God wants you to know that you are a carrier and that you have a mantle over your own life and that you can walk in healing and you can walk in victory. But don't rely on me or don't rely on somebody else. We can help. One shall put to flight 1,000, two shall put to flight 10,000. But I want to tell you, there's a time when God wants the church to grow up. And you might realize at times there when Paul said, I, I can only talk to you as babies. I want, to, I want to give you some meat to eat. I want you to grow up. I want you to be strong. You see, I believe that God wants to endure you and me personally with power from on high that as a cooperative body, we will see amazing things happen. Amen? So that's why, you know, friend, you will not get what God has for you just coming to church. Coming to church is good, but I want to tell you, Jesus found most devils in the church. (laughs) Most sick were in the church. Friend, we are the healed. So I'm I'm talking about my chains fell off. I've been set free, hallelujah. We've got to realize and and walk in that, walk in that anointing, walk in that victory, walk in that power because God wants you to have a personal visitation from God, amen. He wants you to have a personal thing. I've been reading the Azusa Street Revival whatever it is, the uh, thing, <laughs> all about the, the Azusa Street Revival. I've been talk- and then it goes through all the revivals. And most of the, the Pentecostal churches came out of that Azusa Street Revival. Different ones, uh, John G. Lake and all those people got touched by those revivals. People there from, from holiness churches and other churches that went along. And they said that they came into this building where, where it says we saw people. Some were slain in the spirit. Others were praying. Uh, somebody else was, was being ministered to and they were praying for the sick. And stuff was going on all over the place. He said there was such a phenomena that I could not understand what was going on. But he said they were speaking in tongues and they were doing this and that. And he said, it wasn't too long before I was speaking in tongues myself. You come into that anointing, but then you've got to carry that anointing. There's some of these evangelist people, they said they went over into meetings over in India. And they went into these places and there, there's a great manifestation of God's presence. Friend, it's God's presence we want. You can't get God's presence out. Holy Ghost coming. No, there's, you can't. <laughs> Can you catch what I'm saying? There's got to come a hunger. You've got to stir something inside yourself. You've got to push through the tiredness. You've got to push through the, the, the lethargy. You've got to push through what the devil's trying to put on your brain and tell you you'll never make it or you're no good or you're too old or you're too young. I, it was interesting when I first got in the ministry, I, was, I always felt I was too young. And then I found out I was too old. <laughs> And, you know, the enemy's got lies, 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 lies. But there's, it doesn't matter it's because the, the Holy Ghost in you, he will do whatever he wants to do. 
And they said that these, in India there, there was these young people and they were, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And this man walked in amongst them and, and he was listening as they were talking in tongues. And he said this low caste, the lowest of caste in, the, in India, unlearned people, uneducated people. Uh, he said there they were speaking in other tongues, but he said that they were sp- speaking perfect English. Not all of them. Some of them were speaking perfect English. Some of them would, might have been speaking perfect French. Some of them might have been speaking perfect German. You don't know what you're talking, what you're saying. There's a language most surely around us. Amen. And as they were speaking, they were, they were saying how wonderful Jesus was and, and how amazing Jesus was. And they, were, they were glorifying the name of Jesus. It's an amazing thing. Nancy was ministering to a lady once and uh, she was prayer counseling her. And Nancy prays in tongues while she's, while she's prayer counseling people. And uh, this man was from, where was he from, Nan? Do you know the story better than I know the story? You don't, you ever forget? Quick. Unsaved husband. He was sitting in to see what I was going to do to her. And as she started to get free, he looked at me afterwards and he said, you were speaking perfect, and I can't even remember what he told me, some foreign language. Arabic um, or something. Arabic or something like that. Yeah, so it was amazing. But he rejoiced and got saved too, so that was good. Amen. Go, that one. Very good. So, and these, these, these kids were all, all speaking perfect English. See, it's not just a, it's not just a thing. I, 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 when I've first got baptized in the Holy Spirit, all I wanted was to get people off my back. If you, if you don't have the Holy Ghost and you don't understand anything about Him and everybody would say, are you, are you filled with the Holy Ghost? No. Uh, would you like to come to our house for supper tonight? Okay. I never ever had supper. They never ever gave me supper. They were, I would walk in the house and they'd sit me down. The next minute they were shaking me and pushing me and trying to get me filled with the Holy Ghost. They'd come out with my, with a shirt hanging out and my hair all over the place and, and stagger home thinking, my God, what was that? I fell for it every week because I thought we're going to go for supper. <laughs> And, and I wanted the Holy Ghost so bad so I could get people off my back. And I tarried. Nancy got filled with the Holy Ghost. Of course, talking under water with an apple in her mouth. But anyhow, <laughs> she got filled with the Holy Ghost not even knowing about it, not even wanting the Holy Ghost. We, she didn't even want to get water baptized. I did. And I talked her into it. And she got water baptized with me. And she came out of the water speaking in other tongues. Now I'm standing there like a big ninny. <laughs> they gave me a certificate. I'd rolled it up like a cigarette because I was looking, for, all I wanted was a cigarette. <laughs> Nancy couldn't even talk to me. We went home at night and we got down beside our bed to pray. And I said, God help whoever, mum and dad, granddad, some of them. They got up. No, I, I, and Nancy started. Two hour, about an hour later, I got back into bed. I don't know how when she finished, she just kept talking and she prayed for everything that moved and if it didn't move, she was still praying for it. And a lot of people, you know, have an experience without really understanding about the experience. God gave us the Holy Spirit to endure us with power from on high that I can go to the throne room of God, that I can go boldly, be boldly before the throne room of God and I can cry out to my God and God's given me authority and He's given me power to have victory in Jesus Christ, amen. Church, we've got to push through that. I want victory for every one of us in Jesus' name. I want us to rise up as a great army of God. And see God do amazing things because I believe that's what God wants to do. Do you believe that? Oh, man. I I want to just have a quick look in the book of Matthew chapter 8. Just before that, Proverbs 29 verse 2, it says, When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked man rules, the people groan. I don't know what America's in for some sort of a deal when they, I don't know who they're going to get as president, but I think that... uh, there's going to be a lot of groaning in England, in America. Amen. Understand the authority Jesus has played on this earth. Uh, the same authority gave to you as a believer. 
In Romans, uh, Matthew 8, verse 5, uh, it says, Now when Jesus entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, dreadfully torme- tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes to another, come, and he comes, and to my, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. Then Jesus heard it. He marveled and said to those who followed him, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. Understanding authority is very, very important. I'm not talking about control. I'm talking about understanding authority. And I believe that this fresh move that we're going to see is going to be a move that's going to be accompanied by signs and wonders and miracles and a manifestation of God's presence. I I believe that we're going to find a newfound authority. Like when I speak to my little dog, it's that big. I, I know it's going to obey me. Amen. I don't look at Sue. If I looked at Susie and I say, Susie, would you please? She'll, ha, ha, she'll be all over me like a rash. But if I look at her and I say, sit, she, <laughs> I got her full attention. Amen. And because that dog knows the authority in the house. Amen. <laughs> I believe that we're going to rise up understanding that you have a personal authority. Don't misunderstand me. We will still pray for people. We will still believe for people. We'll still do that. But I'm looking for the day when people will rise up knowing the authority that they have and that they will speak to those sicknesses and they will speak to diseases over there that have come to attack their body. See, we're not, gonna, we're not exempt from attack, okay? The enemy will attack us, but what we've got to understand that we are not the, being attacked, we are the attackers, And when the enemy comes, he's going to be sorry he messed with us. He's going to be sorry he even knocked on our door because we're going to stand there and say, you foul devil, in the name of Jesus, I command you. I have authority over you in the name of Jesus. The blood will never lose its power. The anointing of God will smash and break every yoke and every fetter. Now you pick up your weapons and you get out of here in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm not talking about doctrine. I'm not talking about theology. I'm talking about reality. There's nothing better when you, something rises up with you and you take authority over something and you break something and you smash something and you pull it down and you know then that God has looked after you, amen. He said, I'll never ever leave you nor forsake you. What an amazing Savior we have. He sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal all the, the sick. In Luke chapter 9, verse 1 and 2, then he called his 12 together and he gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. He sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. What an amazing statement. In John 16, 7, Jesus said, it's better for you if I go. That's another amazing statement. I want you to read some of these scriptures later on for time's sake. It's better for you to go because if I, if I don't go, I won't be able to send the Holy Spirit. People, these disciples, they moved under that unction, that anointing of Jesus. He would, he would lay hands on them. He would send them. He would do this. And they went on that, on that authority. But he said, I want you to find an authority of your own. I want you to find the power of God for yourself, amen. I just don't want you, you see, the the disciples as they walked around, they marveled all the time. They were saying, what manner of man is this? And they didn't really understand. But friend, I want to tell you, when you're endured with power from on high and you feel that pulsating thing. Remember last week I was talking about the, the Holy Spirit, the presence of God inside you is tangible. It You can release it. 
You can move it, you, and you feel that Holy Ghost go out and you see people set free. But friend, you, when people get saved, you make disciples of them. And I believe a disciple is somebody that has the power of God then to set other people free in Jesus' name. That's where we're heading, I believe. There will be no great revival. Revivalists before, there was one man or one woman or something like that leading, leading bunches of people and thousands by thousands were coming to Christ. But I want to tell you, there's a, there's a new move that's coming when the, the, the sleeping giant called the church is going to rise up, amen. When there's going to come an exceeding great army. It's not just going to be one person on a platform preaching to millions of people, perhaps. It's going to be millions of people ministering to the multitudes, hallelujah. I've, 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 I've realized some of the things I'm saying because I've been to great crusades over in Pakistan. I've seen people touched by the Spirit of God. I've seen um, healings, blind eyes and things like that. But friend, we must make disciples of people. We've got to build people up in the Holy Ghost so they have their own personal relationship with God and in in finding the dynamics of God. You go back, we went back, Nance and I went back to Pakistan about a month after that revival and you wouldn't even know that there was something, that anything had happened. Been to India, done the same thing, seen literally miracle after miracle. But friend, you've got to build, make disciples, amen? I said to the man that was running the crusade, I said, sir, we've got to do something more than this. We may need to make sure we're under the spout where the glory comes out. <laughs> How many people want to be under the spout? You as a believer, not just as a churchgoer, have a God-given authority over all the works of the devil. I'm just going to close there for time's sake. But Father, we, your people, want you to come in your power and in your authority. We want you, my God, to touch us on the inside and cause us to rise above every circumstance and every situation. Father, let the anointing fill this place. Let the anointing fill this place, my God. 